Hi lovelies and welcome in my kitchen. Today I thought I would share some witchy hacks with you that will help you implement some more magic and witchcraft in your day-to-day -day life without any extra effort and without any costs. And I do trust these tips might be very helpful if you're still a baby witch just starting out and if you're just not really sure yet how to make magic work for you. I also do think it might be helpful if you are broom closeted and you have to keep your craft very discreet and secret. But I also trust there might be some helpful tips and tricks in there for the seasoned witches who are just really busy and don't really feel they have the energy or time to do elaborate rituals on a regular basis or to hone the craft in a way that I would like to do it. Tip number one, meditate five minutes. Meditating daily has so many benefits, not only from a witchy point of view, but also for your mental health and your energy for that day. Meditation in witchcraft is so important because it's definitely the basic for grounding, shadow work, visualizations, spell work, and so much more. And it can really benefit to just set five minutes aside every day to do a little meditation. And I want you to forget everything you think you have to do for meditation. You don't necessarily need to sit in a certain position. You don't need to light candles. You don't need music. You need nothing. You can just meditate wherever and whenever you want. You can do that while walking. You can do that while sitting in a bus to school, while sitting in a train to work, Maybe not do it in a car, <laughs> kind of want to focus on the road. You can do it laying in bed, you can do it while having your coffee, and three to five minutes a day are really enough. If you have the luxury to have the mornings to yourself, when your alarm goes off, just hit that snooze button. And the five minutes that gives you, just use it to wake up your body. Do a little visualization, where you just imagine the sunlight coming into your window, hitting your toes, and this white light is traveling up your body, through all of your legs, through your upper body, through your arms, into your head until you're all woken up and filled with warm sunshine and light. And I guarantee you, this energizes you for the day. If evenings work better for you, you can just do that before going to bed. Once you have switched the light off and you're laying down, just try to calm your mind. Try to really meditate either on a specific topic, on an intention, or even just pick a guided meditation on YouTube and listen to that to calm anxiety for a restful and peaceful sleep. Tip number two, set an intention. Setting an intention is a great way to implement magic in your daily life. You can either set your intention every morning when you wake up for the day, you can do it weekly, you can do it once a month, you just set an intention for the entire month, or the evening before the next day, whenever it works best for you. And you don't have to make it into a big complicated ritual. I just would advise you to think about what you want and what you need at the moment. For example, if you have a test, you will set an intention as to, I'm passing the test. If you have a job interview coming up, you can have an intention somewhat like, I am confident. If you have a difficult conversation coming up with someone that's very important to you, you can set an intention like, we are communicating open and honestly. There are just so, so many options to do that. Just make sure you set your intention positive and as if it was a true fact already. And then just take one minute to really visualize the outcome of that intention coming true and there you have it, magic work. Tip number three, light a candle. Now, if you want to manifest that intention even further or just set a little tone for the day, what you could do in the mornings, for example, if you sit down to breakfast or to have a coffee, is to light a candle. I love to do that since it not only creates a very calming and soft and nice energy to wake up to, but it can also really help you with that intention or goal for the day. You can pick a certain candle color if you're very versed in what every color means. Um, you can also just light a white candle. A uh, white candle usually can replace whatever other candle there is. And that burning flame just gives your eyes something to focus on, which also helps you to just find some inner peace and inner calm. And it will also make that intention stronger in your head. Tip number four, 
Use herbs and plants. Now, as a kitchen witch, obviously, I love to use herbs. And I mean, we all eat on a daily basis, I hope so. It's very, very easy to put some magic in your food by just picking a certain type of herb or plant or vegetable. And for me, I do have a little hack. I don't always want to go and look in my book of shadows. So I do have a little cheat sheet in my spice cabinet where it says the goal that you want to achieve and then it gives you a correspondence with a certain herbs you can use and if I'm cooking and I feel like okay let's add a little bit more love to the table I just look it up and I see oh I should maybe use some ginger <laughs> obviously you can also just be very intuitive with that and just pick what calls out to you and who knows what that will bring for your day kitchen witchery is one of the easiest ways to implement magic in your everyday life because with cooking there are just so many ways to do that the way you stir your food the way you pick your spices and the little sigils you can draw into sauces or doughs or pie crusts <laughs> the options are endless tip number five work with scent another little witchy hack that you can implement in your house is to use scent. If you have a little collection of incense or herbal blends or scented candles, you can just pick a scent that would match your mood for the day, your intention for the day, or that can create or evoke a certain kind of energy or feeling. For example, vanilla, if you're just looking for a peaceful, calm and happy home environment. Frankincense is great if you need some extra happiness for the day. If you need mental clarity and a clear head, rosemary is great to use. If you're looking for calm and relaxation, lavender is a great scent to use. And if you want to bring some more love and passion in your home, rose petals are such a lovely smell to have around. And that doesn't only work in your house, of course. You can also use essential oils instead of perfumes and carry that scent with you all day long. Green witchcraft work, just that easy. And while we're at that topic, you can also implement a little bit of magic in your daily hygiene routine. I, for example, have different soaps infused with different herbal blends and different scents. And I will just in the morning pick a soap bar that I like, either something that just smells good to me on a day that calls out to me, or some days I will actually match it to my intention for the day. Then I can just feel it on my skin, seeping into my pores, and I know that little bit of magic will stay with me all day long. It's also a great way, if you're already in the shower anyway, you're coming home in the evening after a long day and you just maybe had a, a horrible day at work or at school and you're feeling all that negative energy around you. And now you have a little soap or lotion or whatever that has an herb in it that helps with purification and cleansing like sage for example you just use that first of all it will make your skin smell great and second of all you can actually visualize while you're soaping yourself up how that negative energy is just washing off you with all the water that's coming off and it's just such a powerful little tool that you can have for the day some mornings i like to pick like a citrus scent for example because they promote happiness and well-being and energy so while i'm applying all that soap i just have that scent in my nose and i visualize that this day will be a happy one and a great one and things will go my way magic work tip number six reconnect with nature for a witch connecting with nature and connecting with the world around you is extremely important and if you don't have time for a nature walk going out in the forest and fields every day that's very normal if you have time for that that's obviously great um, but if you don't don't worry there are other ways that you can reconnect with nature or if you live in a city for example my favorite little trick for that especially if you're just on the go or you're just waiting around somewhere maybe you're waiting for a bus just stand you don't have to close your eyes you can close them maybe not if you're in a you know depending on if it's secure in that area you are at the moment or not. But you can just feel your feet on the ground and you can visualize in your head how your feet are sprouting routes 
that go deeper and deeper in the earth underneath it. And it doesn't have to be like a forest floor or anything that you can also do on concrete. Like just imagine how powerful those roots are to break through the concrete and really go deep into the earth and how you connect it. And then just see how those energies, like all the negative energies from you are now flowing into the earth and the earth is neutralizing them and you get all this fresh and new energy back. And I think that's such a wonderful thing to do. And you don't even have to be outside for that. It, even if you live in a skyscraper, just imagine it while you're standing on your living room floor. Just feel your feet or your hands, that also works. Whatever, your butt. <laughs> just like feel it connecting with that mental image with the earth and get some energy out of that. Another fun way to do that, if you actually want to try and go out every day, is to give yourself some challenges. For example, if you live in a city, your challenge can be to find a very green spot and just sit there on a green spot for five minutes or find a tree and touch that tree. Just feel it's like bark, feel, see how it looks like, look into the leaves. You can also go out and collect certain things. For example, you can set yourself a challenge to find some pebbles that you can make into rune stones. You can also just pick some pretty flowers that you then will put in a vase and get some of Mother Nature's beauty inside. And another fun way to just reconnect with the earth and everything around you is maybe in the mornings just to open the windows wide breathe in the air, see the sun, and just greet the sun. Like, take a minute to greet the sun. Tip number seven, have witchy decor. Another great way to implement magic in your everyday life is to have witchy decor in your home. And obviously that might be a little bit easier if you're out of the broom closet, if you're open about that. But there's also very subtle kind of like things that you can have around if you are hiding your craft from others or if you don't want others to necessarily see what you're into. So I, for example, have this little bell just next to my entrance door. It is super pretty. It has the moon and the sun and the stars on it. And I use it as a way to cleanse energy. So when I enter and I just had a bad day or I'm coming in with like negative energy, negative thoughts, I'll just quickly ring that bell and I imagine with that sound how everything, like all that dark energy around me falls off and that bell sound kind of purifies my energy. And I can enter my own house feeling positive and refreshed and leaving all that negativity behind. There are also various objects that are traditionally hung over the door for protection. What I also love to do is little sachets for sweet dreams. You can just stitch them, embroider them and then fill them with a couple of herbs that will help. I mean, that's once work, but then you can use them every day. Just have them under your pillow. You can even stitch an intention into them and it will just work its magic. Tip number eight, spend a magical time with your kids. Now, if you have kids, chances are you are very busy and probably don't have much time for rituals. But of course, you can also live out your craft and your magic with your kids, even though they might not share that with you or you don't necessarily want to include them in that. You can include them in more subtle ways. For example, I used to sing Chance's lullabies because they really speak to my soul and they're just so pretty. And every time I sing them, it's not only nice for the baby, it's also nice for myself. You can also read lovely little stories that just have some kind of witchiness in them or maybe also some deeper message that you want to bring across. A fun thing to do with kids is generally also baking and cooking because they tend to be very interested in that. And obviously you can also like teach them a little bit about the different correspondences that herbs and spices have and what they can do in a food. And it might also be great to take your kids out in nature. And since kids are usually very curious by nature anyway, it's maybe fun to give them little tasks for things to find. Because there's just so much in nature to find that you later on can use in your craft. Certain plants, certain flowers, Little stones, little sticks, everything can be turned into something magical. Tip number nine, live with the moon. Now, I find a lot of people get very stressed out when they forget a 
full moon or a new moon and they didn't do their big fancy ritual. And I mean, it's nice to do that, but you definitely don't have to do that. A way to remember the moon phase you're in is to just get an app. I have a very nice one called Moony. And it will just tell you in what phase and what sign the moon is in. It will tell you what kind of day it is. And in the morning, if you just quickly look at your phone while you're looking also at your social media or whatever you you enjoy to look at in the morning, have a like a minute look at your moon app so you know what moon phase it is. And you don't necessarily have to do anything with that um, information. But that app also gives you handy little notes on what can be done on that day so you don't even have to know much about moon magic you don't have to every time check your book of shadows for the information according to what you should do now that app will actually tell you it also kind of helps you to structure your days a little bit it will say things like what are your plans and cut your hair and like that you will never forget a full moon or a new moon if you do something then it's up to you you don't have to but at least you will remember in a lot of rural areas, also where I live, the, the moon still plays a very, very big role. I know a lot of people that use moon calendars, witches or not. And especially if you're a green witch, a lot of the planting traditionally also happens in certain phases of the moon. So that might be a very handy tool for you to have. Tip number 10. Make use of sigil magic. Using sigils is a very, very powerful way to implement magic in your everyday life. As a kitchen witch, obviously, I have a lot of sigils on my cooking spoons. And when I cook, I will usually just grab a wooden spoon with a, with a sigil on it that I find fitting for that day. And that process takes me maybe three seconds to decide. Again, magic used in your everyday life without any effort. You can also put sigils in your shoes, for example, to give you some more confidence. You can put them on your fridge if you have worked a weight loss spell. There's just so many options for that. And it's just a great way. And it can also be a very subtle way, depending on how you write your sigils to have magic with you all day, every day. So obviously you're totally free to implement all those tips and tricks. You're also free to like just chose one of those hacks and apply it on a daily basis or even only weekly. I am still sure it will benefit your craft and your life in some little ways. So I really hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks. I will be bringing out a second video on a topic with some more witchy hacks. And if you would like to see that, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you know when I will upload that video. Now, if you also have a witchy hack that you would love to share with others or with me, please comment down below and I would love to see what you guys do in order to keep your days a bit more magical. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you soon.